وحان أخريد هنا يعني ترجمة كبي جي وتري هدراوي ولا يرحدو جعل دك ملو خوري مركا تن وحى لا تابعي لا بكون يكودي نينكي ستيفن واتسلي يرحدو ستيفنز with us this evening وحوت ففتري يعني أورين مانسوين لغو خوري أفاف دالكا إنجريسكا لغا حرلو أو أن إنجريسي أحين ما قريتين زا أما سومالي أما أف تركي أما أف بنجابي إيو أفاف كلا أو كلا دوان Just introducing you Stephen as the editor of the Mother Tongues and in fact this was the volume that Sarah was referring to when we she was starting the Poetry Translation Centre and we got to know each other and started working on Somali poetry and uh, this, in terms of the theme of the journey, Safar, La Bakuni Yakodi Wahan Tegi, Djibouti, or Hargeisa, Marka Wahan Basban Rai, Ela Iyo Burro, Wahan Rabin, Hadrawi and Alkum, Hadrawi, Wahan Rabin and Udi Bugi, Laguda Bai, Totjumadi, Tehran, Jalding Malagukhari, Marka Wan Uisot Uwey, Marka. ما حسوا ساتاب بدي بدي يعني لا فكر يو كني وياي الشيء كذي جعل دين ولا أخرى يو الشيء كله يابله مركا it's a very an interesting story I think I'll say this in English as well so that the people understand because I'm going to be giving the translation in English the story behind this in English it's called has love been blood written and the famous singer Magol was had been giving concerts in Sudan. And she returned back to Somalia, and she received a letter. And when she received this letter, she saw it was written in Arabic from somebody in Sudan. It was a man in Sudan who had written it in Arabic, and she didn't know Arabic, so she passed it to uh, Muhammad Ibrahim Warsami Hadrawi to read. And he read it, and he noticed it was written in red ink. But then as he read through the letter more and more, he realized that actually this is not red ink, but the man had taken blood from his own body, put it in a pen, and written this letter to Magul because he'd fallen in love with her as he saw her singing in Sudan. <laughs> and this, of course, is <laughs> quite an extraordinary thing to do. And so it prompted Hadrawi to, to think about the nature of love. And he uh, made this wonderful poem, uh, which is a very sort of philosophical poem on the nature of love and what it is to, um, for a man and a woman to love each other. So, Ja'aldi Malagukhore, has love been blood written? Has love been blood written? Has marrow yet been poured for it? A person peeled the skin from their back or ribs? Has expression of this been offered in flesh, cut from the cheeks, has blood extracted, its colour still red, uncoagulated, been scooped from the arteries, poured into a milk vessel, have two people offered it, one to the other, as they would fresh milk, have they shared it happily? Time separated in spirit, in body as by a thorn fence, sworn to each other, one morning have two, after first soaking rain, the damp mist dense in an unpeopled place where apart from the trees nothing stirred become aware of each other's rustle. Did that true meeting seem a vision to them brought by love's plight or its mirage from time to time as if suddenly waking out of a dream did their speech desiring utterance pass from a mouth if just a howl did words elude them? Was the situation soured by this? Did spots of ceaseless rain, emotions, tears, spill from their eyes? Did it soak their clothes? Did they sweat compassion? Disoriented with but a stutter of movement, they were stuck. Each time a word, no link with others, lacking substance, limped out alone, was it ten days later their tongue and palate found strength for it? But they are born for success. Of equal standing, parted for so long, did they greet one another? 
exchanging stories, did each for their part pass on the trials sustained through their love? Did they read the message, exchange their news? Love was a food store which, when it was heated with charcoal and fire, the glowing embers of emotions stirred. Did they fill a large pot, time after time, drag the enclosure's nighttime gate, each one with tender eyes, seeing nothing harmed the other? Did they listen thus for a whole year? Did the talking end? Did they then spend half a day in this silent way, as the daylight fell from their staring gaze, their inflamed thoughts, did they pass that night like the camel herders, in nocturnal endurance of cold and dark difficulties bringing illness? Did the dawn then glow and the sun call out, approaching each other, not crossing the boundary of mores and modesty, longing for a balm, with a mere forearm between them did they stand, bodies held straight, opposite each other, avoiding the step of moving closer, resisting the play touch, the youthful way, the taste glimpsed in the distance. Did they just behold each other through their eyes? They stood on the spot, each one gazing, standing upright. Did it last a thousand nights? The legs of the termite emerged from the earth, breaking the surface skin. Did it peel their bodies, consume the flesh? Did it wound the veins, pass to the nerves, persisting to the very inside of the bone? The bad news it places in you that you look on with fear is the trials and your death. Did they welcome it with their whole body and a smile? There's a flower which blooms after morning's compassion has refreshed it with dew. It brings forth a red, le a red liquid for the mouth to sip. Its stamen and stigma entwine like a rope. Was it this they exchanged, offering as a legacy? Did they present it to taste as the last earthly food of love? Did they place at each other's ear the word which was missing? The termite gathered up sand and detritus, forming clay dig diligently, rendering and plastering. Did it transform those two? Did a building arise? Did it mold from them a structure of wonder? A lofty termite mound famed for its thickness and strength. Roaming in the sun heat of daytime, did people in the dry season grazing lands rest in its shade? then move away in the evening, unaware of the reality of the story that deep inside this shady backbone support, two souls await the outcome of truth. If self-sacrifice is not made, the, the breath of life not exchanged, if one does not wait for enduring legacy, the building of a house upright, children and earthly sustenance, then the kisses and intentions are nothing but superficial. A poison sipped to satisfaction in that one same moment, like hyenas snatching a girl of good repute as they hide themselves in the higlo tree, to pounce out quickly. Each man is expectant for what will fall for him, a hyena and his grave hole. The honor he has trampled, the modesty he has snatched, the lying illusion, this does society harm. Did he strive for the highest level of fulfillment of love, that closest to honor, or is something still missing? Well, okay, um, our program will continue. We will have a break to give a chance people to see uh, the author will come here and will sign for those who asked us. And we will read again 
and again with the Rawi because we have a long night to stay together. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you so much, Martin. And we will have uh, uh, a break Thank of. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs>